Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 37 and I am Bezad Razavi. Today we will begin to look at a new feedback topology, namely the voltage current feedback configuration, which is also known as the shunt, shunt feedback topology. And then we'll go over some examples of how this idea is implemented at the circuit level. But before we go there, let's just uh, quickly review what we've seen in the past. We'll be focused on the voltage voltage feedback topology, or we call it volt shunt series topology. And we saw that uh, in this case, uh, we are sensing the output uh, by the feedback network in parallel because we're sensing a voltage. And we are returning this quantity, which is also a voltage in series with this input. So all these three have to place in series. And we saw that because we are returning a voltage to the input, we're trying to build a better voltage amplifier. A good voltage amplifier has a very high input impedance, like a voltmeter. So the input impedance goes up by a factor of one plus uh, root, uh, loop gain. And uh, the output impedance goes down because this feedback wants to make sure that this output is a good copy of the input, as we saw before. And that means that the circuit wants to act as a good voltage source, which means its output impedance should be low. So the output impedance goes down by 1 plus the loop gain. All right, so today we will begin to look at uh, a different topology. So we call this the voltage current feedback topology and as the name implies the idea is that uh, we are trying to sense the output voltage uh, like what we did before right here also but what we are returning to the input is a current quantity not a voltage quantity so we would see that certain things will change as a result of this uh, action. So we cannot use all of the results we obtained here, but of course all of the skills that we have developed will help us analyze these circuits as well. All right, okay, so let's uh, draw the general topology, something like this, and see how it should be configured. Uh, here's our open loop amplifier. I have bought this amplifier, and this amplifier has been advertised as one that uh, receives a current and generates a voltage. All right, I repeat, it receives a current and generates a voltage. We have to do that, right? Because I am returning a current to the input in my feedback circuit. So here's my feedback network, and I want to return a current to the input. That means that the main input is a current quantity. So here's the main input. We call it I in. So I have a current coming into the system. That means that uh, I need to subtract the current from a current, right? I cannot subtract a voltage from a voltage. And then the result is still a current, and that current has to go through the uh, feedforward amplifier. So the feedforward amplifier is, is a circuit that receives a current and generates a voltage. All right, remember we called this a trans impedance amplifier, right? So let's write that here so that we remember a trans impedance amplifier. In fact, a lot of times we call this a TIA, right? TIA, the TIA. All right, that's a trans impedance amplifier. This term applies to the original open loop circuit. It also applies to the final closed loop circuit. Both of them are TIAs because they receive a current and they generate a voltage. Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, so what that means is that the open loop amplifier that I have bought receives a current and generates a voltage. So its gain is no longer dimensionless, right? The gain is defined as the output divided by the input. The output is a voltage, the input is a current. So we have to give this a name. And if you remember, 
When I talked about models of amplifiers and so on, we called this the, uh, we said that the gain would have the dimension of resistance. So uh, this gain will be, uh, this gain here will be called R0. It's strange, right, that the gain of a circuit has the unit of resistance. But uh, that's okay. So let's say R0 is 1 kilo ohm, right? What does that mean? Well, all that means is that if the current to the circuit is 1 milliamp, the output voltage, meaning the current times the gain, is 1 volt, right? So if you have a small signal current of 1 milliamp, let's say a sinusoid, then the output will be a sinusoidal voltage with a, an amplitude of 1 volt, right? The input current times the gain, the gain is R0. So you just have to get used to this idea that this circuit has this gain, which is resistance. So we say, yes, I bought this TIA and has a gain of 5 kilo ohms. Okay, that's all it means, that the output voltage generates is the input current times the gain. Okay, so that is the original open loop feed forward amplifier that we have bought. Now we want to apply feedback around it. Okay, so we're going to sense the output voltage. We know that to sense a voltage, we have to place our voltmeter in parallel with the output port, just like before. So let's do that. Let's go back to this color, and we sense this in parallel. All right, so the feedback network senses the output voltage. Then it does something, and it generates a current, right? This has to be a current, because we can only subtract a current from a current. Okay, so it generates a current, and now uh, this is uh, generating a current, and I have a current source here, and I need to subtract these two. Now we know that to add or subtract two currents, two current sources, we have to put them in parallel, right? So uh, that uh, these connect like so, and these connect like so. You see that this current is coming over these two wires, right? And then uh, some of it is drawn this way through with the feedback network. We subtract that current, and whatever remains flows through A1. All right, so this is what we call a voltage current feedback topology. Right? Somewhat similar to this guy, but of course at the input this has changed because we are returning a current, not a voltage. Now, we will repeat everything we did here. We want to find uh, the closed loop gain and the closed loop input impedance and the closed loop output impedance. And then we want to implement this at the circuit level to see how exactly it works out. Uh, this part should be familiar, right? sensing a voltage. You saw that many a time we sense a voltage by a simple resistive divider. We can do the same thing here. But this part will change because previously we wanted to place this voltage in series with that, so we used an op amp or we used a transistor with base and emitter or gate and source as a subtractor, right? But here we can't do that, we have to change our approach. Okay, very good. So let's uh, carry on. Uh, just a few remarks about this topology. In the ideal case, uh, what do I expect for this input impedance to be. Uh, this feedback network wants to sense a voltage. A good voltage sensor, a good voltmeter, has an infinite input impedance. So this in input impedance should be infinity. On this side, uh, this feedback network wants to generate a current. It wants to deliver a current, so it should look like a good current source. And a good current source has an infinite output impedance. So this output impedance also has to be infinity, in the ideal case. All right. How about the main amplifier, the feedforward amplifier? Uh, the input impedance should be what? We're trying to measure a current, right? Remember in the past we said that to measure a current, so we have to a current through a wire, we have to cut the wire and place our current meter in series with the wire. So for the wire not to know that we are measuring its current, the device has to have a zero resistance. So a good current meter or a current sensing device has to have a 
low impedance, preferably zero. So we would expect that this impedance should be zero in the ideal case. All right. I know that this is less intuitive than voltage quantities, but we just have to uh, get comfortable with it. And finally, uh, the output impedance of the circuit should be zero in the ideal case because this uh, circuit is trying to generate a voltage. It wants to act as a good voltage source. So the output impedance of A1 should be zero. All right, so in other words, I bought A1. A1 is a really good trans impedance amplifier. It has a zero input impedance and a zero output impedance. I connected it to a feedback network, which I also bought. And this feedback network is also a good feedback network. So its input impedance is infinity and its output impedance is also infinity. All right. Of course, in reality, none of these hold. We will have some values in between, but at least it's good to remember what uh, the ideal situation should be. Very well. So with these, now we can go ahead and find various parameters. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is this. A1 has a unit of resistance, dimension of resistance, right? Okay, so one kilo ohm. How about this guy? What is uh, the unit of this? K. What does K do? K takes a voltage, gives us a current. So K is defined as the output divided by the input of this network, right? So current divided by voltage, that's one of a resistance, right? So the unit would be uh, something, so let's say uh, uh, 0.5, and then it would be 1 over ohm, okay? Maybe 0 0.05 or, it doesn't matter really, I'm not looking for a realistic number here, but 0 0.05, 1 over ohm. Okay, so that's the unit of K. It's strange, but that's okay. We'll take it, right? All right. So, in fact, right now I can give you a quiz. And the question here is this. Does uh, the unit of K always have to be 1 over unit of A1. Okay, we saw that that's true here. Is it true generally for any feedback system, regardless of uh, voltage, 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 current, and so on? I'll give you one minute to think about it. All right, so what is your answer? The answer is yes, it does have to be uh, the inverse. Uh, one way of thinking about it is that we know that for any negative feedback system, if you remember, we wrote this. We wrote y over x is equal to a1, 1 plus k a1. Right, for a general negative feedback system. And what we see here is that in the denominator we have 1, which doesn't have a unit, doesn't have a dimension plus Ka1. So Ka1 must have no dimension. And that means that K and A1 must have units that are, that are inverse of each other. So that's important because if in some analysis you're trying to find the loop gain of some complex circuit or system, and you carry out all the analysis, and at the end you check to make sure the units are correct, you have to see that the loop gain, 
Ka1 has no unit. Okay, if there's a unit, something is wrong. All right, so let's move on. Uh, we will look at the closed loop gain first. So let's calculate uh, the closed loop gain. Closed loop gain. Now, of course, you may say, well, we already know how much that is, right? Uh, after all, it's this equation, so we can always use that. Sure, but uh, let's just uh, try to analyze the circuit as is, because now this is not called x, it's a current, so we have to add or subtract currents and so on, so it's a little more interesting. So let's try to find the closed loop gain of this circuit, and of course, we verify that it is this. All right, so how do I do that? Well, my objective is to find V out over I in. Okay, well, uh, we start out from here, say this is V out. The V out goes to the feedback network and gets multiplied by K to generate a current here. So how much is that current? So let me change the color of my pen to maybe brown. So this current, the current that K is drawing is equal to K times V out. That's the definition of the feedback factor. So this current is K times V out. Okay, all right. Now we write the KCL here. You say I in is coming in and we lose KV out. So what remains and flows through A1 is I in minus KV out. So let's write that here. We have I in minus KV out as the current flowing into A1, right? KCL here. And A1 says, I will take my input current and multiply it by my gain, which we called R0, not A1, but R0, just to be more relevant, right? So A1 says, I'm going to multiply uh, that current by R0 to generate a voltage. So that's V out. And now I can see that if I find V out over I in, that's the closed loop gain. And it just comes out to be R0, which is the open loop gain, the gain of the feed forward amplifier, divided by 1 plus K R0. So R0 over 1 plus K R0. So that's not surprising, right? That's just this. A1 is now called R0. Okay, so yes, as expected, applying negative feedback does reduce the overall gain of the system. But we are hoping that uh, we will gain some other benefits somewhere, uh, just the way we did here, right? So let's see what happens. Okay, in the next step, I would like to find the closed loop input impedance. So let's do that. Closed loop input impedance. All right, okay, so uh, remember that uh, we said the input impedance is always the open loop imp input impedance time something or something, right? We have to, that's what we are hoping to find. Uh, but we always need to know the open loop input impedance first before we try to find the closed loop input impedance. All right. So that means that I need to model the input impedance of A1 somehow. And for that, you have to go back to the amplifier models that I talked about some lectures ago and review those to remember how we model the input resistance of a trans impedance amplifier. Okay? So a trans impedance amplifier is supposed to have a zero input impedance, but in reality it doesn't, right? So in reali reality, it has some input resistance, which we call R in. So this is the open loop input resistance of this feedforward amplifier. Okay? All right. And then we draw the, everything else as, as before. So we, have, uh, sen we are sensing the output in parallel. We are returning the input in parallel. So here's I in like th this, and then these also connect in parallel, right? And our objective is to find the input distance of this whole thing, right? So 
meaning the input resistance seen between these two terminals. Now we know that this is called I in connected between these two terminals. So if I find the voltage that I see here, then that voltage divided by this current will give me the input impedance for the closed loop configuration. All right, so let's do that. This is called V in. Okay, so our objective is to find V in over I in. All right, no problem. Uh, let's just uh, go around the loop. Uh, we know that uh, this voltage is V in, right? So you have V in here, V in here, V in here. If this voltage is V in, how much is this current? That current is just V in over R in, Ohm's law. So that current is V in over R in. Oh, so if the current is this much, how much is this voltage? So this is what we call A1, right? The main amplifier. What the amplifier says, if you give me a current at the input, I will multiply that by my gain and deliver a voltage, right? And the gain is R0. So it will take this current, multiply it by its gain, and deliver a voltage right here, which we called V out before. It's the same, it's still V out, right? Okay, now we'll continue to go around the loop. Uh, v out, this voltage, now goes to K. And K says, I will take this voltage and generate a current at the output equal to K times V out. So this current will be this voltage times K. So times K. All right. Okay, so that's the current that comes out of the feedback network. Now we write the KCL here. We say I in is coming in we lose this much and the rest flows through R in. So let's do that. We'll, we'll write I in is coming in, we lose that much, so minus V in over R in, R0 times K, and the rest flows through R in. So if I multiply this whole thing by R in, that will give me the voltage, right? The current times the resistance. So that voltage it happens to be what? We call it V in, so that's V in. All right, so you see that I deliberately avoided calling this V out because V out is not of interest to us in this calculation, right? I just stayed with I in and V in only and I made my way around the loop and I ended up with one equation just in terms of I in and V in. Okay, so we can find V in over I in here, right? V in over I in. You can see that these get multiplied and come to the other side. So we get 1 plus KR0. And this stays on this side. So we have R in divided by 1 plus KR0. So what happened? We see that the input impedance of the circuit has gone down by a factor of 1 plus the loop K. Whereas in the previous case, for voltage-voltage feedback, the input impedance had gone up by 1 plus the loop K. Why is that? Well, we are returning a current quantity to the input. We're trying to make the circuit a better current sensor. And a good current sensor has a very low input impedance. So we are improving the uh, quality of the circuit, if you will. And that means that the input impedance has, has to go down. Okay? So as a result of returning a current to the input, we reduce the input impedance. As a result of returning a voltage to the input, we increase the input impedance. Those are important rules to remember. OK, let's go on to the uh, closed loop output impedance and see what happens. Now, in this case, you might suspect that the closed loop output impedance will go up. Uh, sorry, will go down. Why? Well, just like before, what we expect is that this circuit, this circuit is trying to create a voltage at the output that's a good replica of the input. Now, of course, now the input is a current, so the, they don't have the same dimension, but they, have, they should have the same shape, right? If this is a good sinusoid, a nice clean sinusoid, 
You want this to be also a nice clean sinusoid, right? Okay, so the feedback network wants to create a good replica out here, and that means that the feedback network wants to act as a good voltage source. So its output impedance should be lower than the open loop circuit. And that's what, what we should see. So let's do that quickly. Uh, again, the calculations should be similar to what we did here, but it's instructive to go through this again now that we have current feedback. So here's our circuit. Uh, I need to model the output impedance of this amplifier. Right, I bought an amplifier, it's called the trans impedance amplifier, and its output impedance is not zero. So how do I model it? Go back to the circuit models that we developed for amplifiers some lectures ago. And what you will remember is that if it's a voltage output, what we have is we have a dependent voltage source, right? Which would be in this case, uh, this voltage is equal to the gain times the input current, right? So that would be K times I1, call this I1. Okay, and of course, something's going on here, preferably this is a short circuit, right? In other words, this voltage source monitors the current through this wire and generates a voltage. Now, of course, in reality, it's not exactly zero, right? We said, ideally, it should be zero. Ideally, this should look like a short circuit. All right, and then uh, here, we generate a voltage, but we have an output resistance, so we're going to call this R out. So R out denotes the output resistance of the feed-forward amplifier before we apply feedback. All right, so then we, uh, sorry, we, I shouldn't call this K, I should call this R0. R0, right, the gain of the feed-forward amplifier. And then we have a feedback network that measures this voltage in parallel and then returns a current to the input, right? So let's draw the input current source, I in, and we said that it goes like this, I in wants to go to the inputs of the feed forward amplifier, and this guy comes back and adds or subtracts current, so that would be like this, right? Now, our objective is to find the output impedance of this topology that means that we need to connect Vx here and measure Ix, right? Vx over Ix is the output impedance. But when we are finding the output impedance, like the Thevenin resistance of a circuit, we set all independent sources to zero. So this has to be set to zero. And when a current source is set to zero, it becomes an open circuit. So it just disappears. And these two wires just hang like that. They are not connected to anything else. Okay, so let's try to find Vx over Ix, right? Should be interesting. How do we do that? Well, let's travel from here. We say this voltage is Vx. That means that this voltage is Vx, right? Because K is monitoring this voltage. Which means this current is given by K times Vx. Right, the feedback network wants to produce a current equal to the feedback factor times the voltage here. All right, uh, what, go, what happens here? How much is I1? Well, we need to write a KCL here. This wire has no current anymore because I opened this, right? So nothing here. I have KVX coming this way. So how much is I1? Well, I want, going, I want going to opposite directions, so I1 has to be minus kVx. So this current is minus kVx. All right, so minus kVx is flowing into the feedforward amplifier. And the feedforward amplifier says, I'm going to take my input current and multiply it by my gain to generate a voltage. So it will multiply it by its gain to generate a voltage. All right, so this whole thing is the voltage from here to here. That's great, right? Okay, now I have this voltage, I have this voltage, I have this resistance, I need this current. So we write a little KVL and so on. So we say that uh, this current is equal to this voltage minus this voltage divided by this resistance. So we'll write 
uh, Ix is equal to this voltage, Vx, minus this voltage, which we just found, right? Minus Kvx R0. So that would be plus Kvx R0, and then divided by R out. So we have it, right? So Vx over Ix, the closed loop output impedance of the circuit is given by R out divided by 1 plus K R0. Okay. So that agrees with our intuitive prediction, right? We said that uh, because we're measuring this output voltage and trying to create a good voltage source, the output impedance should go down, and indeed it does. So it's important to understand the differences and the similarities between this topology and that topology, right? So the main difference is that the input impedance has gone down as a result of feedback to the input, right? Okay, so this is a, a simple look at the voltage current feedback topology, and we are now ready to look at some examples uh, let me make sure that I have covered everything here. All right, so let's go and take a look at some examples. Okay. So. The basic challenge that we have in this topology is to figure out if you want to build a transistor level circuit, how do we return a current to the input, right? For voltages, we have figured it out. We said take an op amp, the two inputs can serve as the return path, the subtraction, right? Or even for a transistor, we connected something to the base and something to the emitter or something to the gate, something to the source. Those worked as subtractors for voltages. But now we need to figure out how we subtract two currents. How do we return a current to the input? All right, so here's the big question that you need to address. How do we return a current to the input? Okay, all right, well, let's take it easy and start, start step by step. We will start from here. We build a little amplifier. Uh, like so, I in, V out, RD, and VB. Do you agree that this is a simple open loop uh, trans impedance amplifier? It takes a current, it generates a voltage, right? That's the trans impedance amplifier. The current goes in, there's a common gate stage, it entirely flows from the source of the drain, this is an AC current, and flows through RD and generates V out. So the open loop gain of the circuit is how much? So we haven't applied feedback yet, right? So open loop gain is equal to, well, it's just uh, this current multiplied by RD gives us V out, right? So the gain is just RD. Right, V out over I in is RD, so that's the gain. And it's a trans impedance amplifier, so its gain has the unit of resistance. So we say the gain of the circuit is 2 kilo ohms. Okay, so that was easy. Um, while we're on it, let's try to find the input and output impedances also. So open loop input impedance is R in equal to what? What's the input impedance here? So again, we assume lambda equals zero for simplicity. Well, looking to the source of a MOS device with the gate at AC ground, we see one over GM. So that's one over GM. It's relatively low, right? So that's why it, it deserves to be a trans impedance amplifier. And then uh, how about the open loop output impedance? Output impedance 
is uh, R out, and that's just R D. So that's easy. So you can see that everything that we learned in electronics one plays a role in what we do here, right? Okay. All right, so now I need to apply feedback. And I would like to apply to measure the output voltage by my feedback network and then return a current to the input, meaning that uh, the feedback network must produce a current that, for example, gets subtracted from this guy. Okay, so now with the feedback network, let me uh, draw it uh, something like this. Here's the feedback network, right? Okay. It wants to measure the output voltage and give me a current. Uh, do I know of a device that can do that? You give it voltage, it gives you current. Sure, a transistor can do that, right? So why don't I use a transistor here? I will use a transistor like this that measures this voltage with respect to ground, generates a current, and the current just goes right in here. Right? That could be a feedback network. Uh, it generates a current at the output. Uh, this transistor can act as a pretty good current source. Remember we said the output EBITDA should be infinity here. Well, it won't, be, it won't be infinity, but it'll be somewhat high. And we said that the input EBITDA should be infinity. That's roughly true, so that's also good. Okay, so you see that it's actually very simple, right? I managed to use a single transistor to build the feedback network. Now, of course, uh, we said in the past that feedback networks might be usually just passive devices. In this case, we have an active device. That's okay, nothing wrong with that, but this just serves our purposes right now. Okay, so let's give these names M1 and M2. And what we would like to do is find the closed loop parameters of the circuit now that we have applied negative feedback. Now, I said negative feedback. Are we sure this is negative feedback? Okay, well, let's do a quick test. So here's the test that we performed. Remember, we talked about this before. Uh, the idea is that we break the loop somewhere. So let's say we break it right here. Okay, so let me put a little break and I'll attach it later. So put a little break here and I will apply a perturbation on the side, something like this, this goes up. Now I need to go around the loop and see what happens, right? So M2, the gate of M2 goes up. Uh, because we're performing, a, in a sense, a loop gain test, we set all independent sources to zero. So this is gone. The gate of M2 goes up. What happens to the current of M2? The current of M2 increases. What happens to this node voltage? That node voltage goes down because we're drawing more current from RD. Right? You can think of M2 as a simple common source stage. Right? We're applying something to the gate. The source is grounded. The drain generates a current. That current flows through this device and ends up in RD. What, does, what is this topology called? These two. It's a cascode structure, right? So we studied that extensively before. So sure, these two form a cascode in, in this test. And when this goes up, this goes down. So this goes down, and that means that this goes down. So great, yes, the feedback is negative. We're good. All right? OK. So interestingly, uh, when I started the circuit, I looked at M1 as a common gate stage. And M2 was just a feedback quantity to me. But in this particular loop gain test or feedback sign test, I see that M2 and M1 look like a cascode structure, right? All right, very well. So let's go back and reconnect uh, our feedback right here and carry on with our closed loop calculations. All right, so let's do that. Uh, so we're looking for closed loop parameters. So that means the gain and the input and output impedances. All right. Well, uh, 
I always have that equation a1 over 1 plus kA1, right? So I need k. I have a1, that's the gain, open loop gain. I need k, the feedback factor. How much is the feedback factor here? The, feed the feedback factor in this case is defined as the current that we deliver divided by the voltage that we receive. And for this case, it would be gm2. So k is equal to gm2, right? Because it's the current that it produces divided by the voltage that it receives, right? So that's gm2. All right, that's the transconductance of m2. So now I have everything. I can quickly go ahead and write out, for example, the closed loop gain. So closed loop gain is equal to the open loop gain, which is Rd, divided by 1 plus the loop gain. The loop gain consists of K and A1. K is Gm2, and the open loop gain A1 is Rd. So that is the open loop gain of the circuit, and closed loop gain of the circuit. All right? As expected, it's gone down by 1 plus the loop gain. All right, how about the uh, closed loop input impedance? Closed loop uh, input impedance. Okay, well, uh, we have the open loop value, so we say it's 1 over GM, and then because we are returning a current, the input impedance goes down. The circuit becomes a better trans impedance amplifier, right? The input impedance will be lower. So that would be divided by 1 plus GMRD. And finally, the output impedance. So the closed loop output impedance is the original output impedance that we have, the open loop value, R out, Rd, uh, divided by 1 plus the loop gain, Gm2 Rd. Do you see something peculiar here, both for open loop and closed loop? In the open loop circuit, the gain and the output impedance are the same. In the closed loop circuit, the gain and the output impedance are the same. It's weird, but it's okay, right? Because the gain of a trans impedance amplifier has the unit of resistance, and the output impedance has the unit of resistance, so they just happen to be the same. That's not the case in general, but it just happens to be the case here. All right, so that is the, uh, a simple example of how we return a current to the input, how we perform a subtraction of currents here. Okay, uh, let's see. I wanted to uh, talk about one more point before we wrap up this lecture. Um, all right, so let's suppose that uh, I have the circuit, but the gain of the original amplifier, the open loop gain, is not enough. I would like to have more gain. How do I do that? All right, so this is another example which I will briefly touch on today, and we will return to next time. So here's uh, my common gate amplifier acting as a trans impedance amplifier. And uh, now I would like to increase the gain. So I can add another stage. Of course, you can try to cascode and all that, but I just try to add another stage. So here's another stage, a gain stage. So we call this RD1. Rd2, M1, I will call this M3 because I don't want it to be confused with this one. Okay, so and uh, let's connect this to a bias. And now I would like to apply feedback, right? All right, so can I do the same thing? I say, well, here's the output voltage. Now, of course, our open loop gain is higher, right? Because it previously was Rd. Now it's Rd1 times the gain of this stage. You go from voltage to voltage, right? So the total gain from here to here would be Rd1 times minus Gm3 Rd2. But we'll talk about that later. But my point here is, K 
can I use the same technique to return a current? Okay, so here's M2, and I'm saying that M2 is my feedback network, and it senses this voltage and returns a current, right? Looks simple enough. Well, but there's a problem. Do we have positive feedback here or negative feedback? We have positive, negative feedback here. But I added an inverting stage in the loop. So now the feedback is positive. And that's a problem, right? So I cannot do this. In the next lecture, we will see how this can be modified so that the feedback is negative. I will see you next time.